it. That thing on your stomach. A new strain of parasite. When it reproduces, it will cast millions of microscopic spores into the air. Just move your legs towards me real slow. Real slow. Experience the living, breathing, terrifying vision of modern 3D. Parasite. You have only seen the preview. In 3D, you will live the film. Parasite. The first futuristic monster movie in 3D. Parasite. <laughs> What's up, rotters, and welcome back to Blimwit, the podcast that takes a deep dive into the best and worst horror films of the 80s and 90s. I'm Stevie, your VHS veteran. I'm going to start this week off with some shout outs. The following awesome people recently signed up to our Patreon page and so deserve a public, a public thank you. I nearly said apology. Um, so, <laughs> a huge thank you. And sorry, I guess, to Matthew Cuss, Matt Bing, Sarah Eisel, Matthew Brown, Maureen Baird, Mike Leitch, Eric, Sam McHaney, Tom Claxton, Kerry Deacon, Sario, Lena, Paul Downey of the awesome Bloody Flicks, Alicia Hiscock, Lorna Campbell, Dan Allen, Benjamin Barron, Dale Pepper, and Travis Trudell. Thank you guys, you guys. My appreciation is boundless. Thanks for being a part of the community and for supporting the show. Uh, speaking of Patreon, just yesterday, the new episode in our Leprechaun franchise retrospective, shit, that was dreadful, uh, dropped. Um, me and Mike Munzer chat about Leprechaun 5 and 6, the Hood duo, with Alex Ailing and Brad Hansen, the mates of hell. Let's just say they've not aged brilliantly. The movie's... That is, not the guests. Well, well. Uh, also, on the Cellar Dweller tier, Matt Draper joined me for a special Black Mirror episode where we discuss the brand new series, Series 6, episode by episode before ranking them. Um, anyone else a little bit thrown by episode 4? I mean, eh? Where did that come from? Anyway, if you want to join in, just head to steviesbrainrot.com and click the Patreon link. Or, obviously, it's in the show notes below. And the awesome Mike Lee Graham designed VHS Brain Rot t-shirts are currently on sale for a limited time, so grab one while you can. A few sizes I think have already sold out. Uh, and that is also via steviesbrainrot.com. So, this week, listener favourite Cody the Scream Strand joins me as we discuss Charles Band's 1982 3D spectacular Parasite. Made towards the end of Embassy Pictures' 37-year run, it boasts a debut lead performance from Demi Moore and special effects from a pre-heavyweight Stan Winston. With the mix of Mad Max post-apocalyptic wasteland setting and a stomach-bursting alien-esque creature, it's a fantastically messy and baffling output, and the Parasite action only really gets pumping in the final 30 minutes. Speaking of Parasites, hey Cody! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Not me shrieking in the first five seconds. This episode's going to start with a jump scare. <laughs> <laughs> Also born in the 80s. Yes, yes. exactly. It could Two be Two parasites you. from the 80s walk into a room. <laughs> What's the rest of it? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> As for going to workshop, I don't know. Okay. Hello, how are you? Good morning to you. It's afternoon Good morning. Here, but... Oh, yes, it's 10 a.m. on a Sunday. Beautiful Sunday morning in New Is York. It... How is it boiling hot in the wall? You walk. Is it really hot? <laughs> uh, You're yeah. gonna have an iced coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very hot. It's very hot here in New York. Yeah, oh, that's not dear. it. That's not it either. Uh, you can't do one. I can't do one. <laughs> I can do one. Listen, <laughs> listen. I, I know. I listen. I know one sentence that's really good. Please. <laughs> 
hang on. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> okay. Could you please... <laughs> no! <laughs> I can't stop. No! Okay, here we go, here we go. Could you please congregate under the departure boards? Okay, actually, that's very that's good. all right. Okay, that's very good. That's very okay. good. I take back. Only I can't do... The American <laughs> can't do a New York yeah. accent, okay? Right. Because I was uh, born and raised in South Dakota. Um, in the yeah. farms, farmlands, okay? <laughs> in the farms. <laughs> I can only speak cow. Okay, that's it. <laughs> um... Is it boiling hot there, like it is here? It's it's sweltering. Oh, that's and awful. because I'm recording this, I have to turn the AC off in my apartment. So we have about an hour's time before I completely turn into <laughs> a cherry tomato. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, we'll, we, we'll get this done. I'm thinking now, though, because every year this... Well, you know summer. It, it is annual. And but every year in England, it shocks us. Like we're like, what is happening? I can't breathe. So I'm thinking now we should start to maybe consider installing AC everywhere because it's worse every year. Thank you, global warming. Yeah. But yeah. you know, I was shocked about that fact when, when I was you were in here. London. Yeah, I was like, okay, so where's the thermostat? And they were like, the what? And I was like, the thermostat. Where is? Where is the, where yeah. is the thermostat? No, we just got windows. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's it. It's crazy to me. That's so I think we do me. need to start adapting and and you know thinking. Oh, this might happen again next year, and start to prepare <laughs> for it. Chances are, yes, this is gonna happen again. <laughs> Seeing a pattern here. Yeah, it might keep happening. You know, this yeah. is. Uh... So, excuse if you can hear any weird noise. I've got the balcony open, and I have actually got a fan. I invested in a fan, which is pushing the hot air towards me. <laughs> oh, so, my God. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. Um, have you been watching horror since we last spoke? Can I just say also, I was looking through the films we've done on this podcast and on Patreon, and you have really had some amazing shit, because we had uninvited, <laughs> uh-huh. raw head wrecks... Oh, one of my favorites. All the five, pissing. yeah, yeah, the pissing uh, baptism. What? All five Critters films. All Iconic. F- yeah, all four Ghoulies films. Uh huh. And I feel like there's one more. There was Primal Rage. Oh yeah, yeah. That, Primal maybe Rage, that wasn't yeah. as good, but yeah. No, you know, and this one might be in in, in the same uh, vein, but I did have more fun watching this one than Definitely. I did have Primal Rage. Yeah, um, yeah. Have you been watching any horror, or anything that you've seen recently? Uh, yes. Oh my God, the uh, the new Evil Dead. What did you think? I loved it. Did you not like it? I... Ah! (laughs) Let's be honest. Okay, I'm going to be honest. I did like it, but because uh, the 2013 Evil Dead, uh, the Uh reboot, when that came out, I was obsessed and I still am. And I think it's so refreshing and so different and and practical and fantastic. And so I was expecting even more with this. And it felt Mm -hmm. very much like... Oh, it's from that world, from this new version. And it for me, it didn't push it anywhere new. So I was kind of like, I still prefer the, the previous one. I can see that. I can see that. I like this one I thought took some really creative swings. And that's why I liked it. Yeah. Like the monster at the end. I was like, oh, my oh God. that's something really fun that we haven't seen before. You know what I mean? Yeah. Optimus Deadite. Literally. I, <laughs> I thought it could have been um, funnier. If I'm being honest, yeah, because that lead actress was devouring the scenery. Yeah, like yeah, I yeah. could have just watched her the whole movie. She's she an was, icon now. Yeah, she was selling it for me. Um, and then I think we talked about it the last time, but Barbarian is just always just like right, right here in the back yeah. of my mind. Oh, love it's it! So good. I love those it's horrors, so and I think yeah. we're seeing more of those where it you think it's one thing, and then like 20 minutes before the end, it goes. Now this is what it's about, and you're like, uh-huh. what? Uh huh. Uh huh. I love that. I yeah. love. I love a switcheroo. It, uh, right, but it's you have to use it. You know what I mean? It's a switcheroo that is then y- integral to the story. Yes. You know what I mean? Not like yeah. a M Night Shyamalan. Oh, psych credits. Right. You know when it's <laughs> yeah. like it, you've got to you've got to use the the twist. Otherwise, yeah. I feel like it's a waste. Yeah. No. Yeah, I agree. And, and the barbarian, I think, is just perfect for that. Um, I'm really, really looking forward to talk to me. You know, the new... Oh, my God! It yeah. looks so cool! I, I have no friends that have seen it, and they've just said it's the number one horror film of the year. But how... 
these concepts. How do you think of something like this? You know what I mean? I'm like, who, uh, ooh, how, I know what you mean. You even... I sometimes go, that hand idea or whatever it is is so good. It did that must have come from a dream, right? Something. Or like, did you see that movie? Um, was it His House? Yes. The horror movie about... Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Like, I thought that was genius. And I'm like, the, how, how do you think of this and story? The twist and then like, that. telling it through the horror lens. I'm like, that is, it's fascinating. Yeah. It's fascinating to me. I know. It's, it's wonderful. I, I, I'm sure I dream some amazing concepts and then I just lose them. Gone. 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 I have night terrors. Oh, I'm sure I, we're, I, we're not far. We're not far from being able to record our dreams. I'm sure, and I, I, I mean, happen. with AI and everything, this is the thing. Like theater okay. is going to be robots. You got to stop that right now. The last really? thing I want is a, a robot in my brain recording what I dream. <laughs> dream, okay? But think you could make the most. Ama- you could make your own porn. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do nightly. Yeah, right, <laughs> fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but, uh, unfortunately we do have to, um, talk about Parasite. I'm not, I say unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately. So yeah, 1982's yeah. Parasite. Now, so the Oscar winning film Parasite. <laughs> right. Yeah. Did I watch the right one? Could you imagine? Not that one. <laughs> <laughs> not that one. No, I watched the one with Demi Moore. Yes. Demi- yeah. You said, now just to let you know, going forward, I will probably be pronouncing it Demi. Just because Is in England. Demi? No, apparently she pronounces it Demi. Um, but in England, most of us, I think we just say demi. And because that's like the word, like a demi glaze. Or a demi plie. <laughs> All right, plie to kid. <laughs> a d- <laughs> that's a homosexual. Yes, <laughs> you there. <laughs> you there. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I'll probably be saying demi, like demi Lovato. I, <laughs> it means half, right? I think so. So what's ha- so. so half more? What's half of more? Less. <laughs> so she's just called less. Demi less. <laughs> That's her sister. Demi more and half less. <laughs> you got it. I knew it was there. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, so this was directed and produced by Charles Band. Sometimes it's cited as his first ever movie, but it's not like he had Tourist Trap before this and stuff. Um, obviously, we know him. I've talked about him a lot with like Ghoulies and stuff, and he uh-huh. had Empire Pictures and then Full Moon Pictures, which is still going. Um, now, this was a first time watch for me. I knew of it, and I'd Same. seen lots of. Uh, really? <laughs> no shit. <laughs> <laughs> And I'd seen lots of clips from it. And I what I wasn't expecting was the... Any of it? <laughs> well, that. That, first of all. Uh-huh, but specifically, uh-huh. the, the post-apocalyptic Mad Max vibes that it was giving me. So it's yeah. gone, what are two films that have been really successful recently? Alien and Mad Max in, what, 79 and 80. Let's put them together. That's basically it, right? It, yeah, you could definitely feel like they saw Mad Max and were like, that's... But it was only the first That's my Mad aesthetic. Max, clearly. Yes, yeah, yeah. Because the, the desert one hadn't come out. Even though they mentioned a desert a couple times in the script, and I was like, bitch, where? <laughs> well, it's... Jo- Sand where? They're in Joshua, aren't they? They're not a character. That's a place. Yeah, no, it looked like that was like like a... But there was still vegetation. Yeah. It's, I mean, there was no budget, so I guess they no. just found... And they're the growing place. lemons in a desert? No, oh, yeah, that was interesting, wasn't it? You're trying to tell me they're growing lemons in a desert? But also, like... The biggest criticism I think I had for the movie, and I know it's like, you know what I mean, like criticism, <laughs> I the movie. but it was like, I felt they, they, the one thing that they really could have narrowed down and they didn't was the world. Because uh-huh. I just, I just, I couldn't quite figure out the universe that they were building, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think all of that would have been solved if we would have just seen a city in its current state. Right, like the, the the future metropolis, because we have people yeah. that have come from the city, right? Yeah, yeah. If we, and I know, understand that the budget is probably very small. Yeah. Um, but like, if we would have seen where they came from, mm-hmm. you know, and obviously they're all escaping. They don't want to go there. It's bad. Right. To give us scope and scale and that sort of yeah, 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 yeah something. You know. Yeah. No, I agree with that. And I I must say I found some of it very confusing, and I had to go. The plot is, is they, they they swing. They swing left and right, okay? They don't hit yeah. much. No, no, it's loosey-goosey with it the It is plot, loosey-goosey. Okay? Um, I'll ask you for your synopsis, but before that, this is what it was called in different territories, because this is something okay. I like to do. So in Argentina, it was called symbiosis. I mean, I, I, sort I of. I, I, mean, 
Maybe. One can live without the other, though. So I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Um, in Finland, Finland. <laughs> <laughs> in Finland, they call it the parasite. I'm gonna. Well, I'm gonna do each place in the accent. In Finland, <laughs> uh, it was called parasite made to kill, which is true. Um, oh, like, in, like parasite, like colon made to kill. Yeah, a, a colon parasite. What? <laughs> No. no, like Parasite and then oh. like the second title. Yes, yes, yes. That what it was. Like not... 007, License to Kill. Sorry, yes, there is a colon. No, it's not Parasite that's made to kill, yeah. Okay. So, uh, it, in Italy, it... <laughs> <laughs> it was just called Mutants. Fine. Oh, In yeah. Japan, I'm not doing that accent. I think I'll leave don't the accents it. from now on. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. I think I'm going to stop don't that. Um... Danger, Will Robinson, <laughs> danger. <laughs> Abort. <laughs> uh, yeah, in Japan it was called Devil's Parasite. I mean, oh. it's not. It's but it's no. fine. It'll get you. That'll pull you in, won't it? Yeah. Something diabolic. In Mexico, it was called Infernal Parasites. Hmm. It's mean, better than Devil's Parasite. Yeah, I agree. And then the <laughs> my favorite Denmark. It was called The Bite of Death. I like that. Yeah, I'd pick that. I up. think that's the best fit. Yeah, the bite because of that death. makes sense because it. It bites you and then you die. Okay, so it's really explanatory, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And sometimes it even, I mean, it's, it pops right out of your head. You know oh, what I well, mean? yeah. It's, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you've heard of a chest burster. Mm-hmm. You're like, what about, you're, <laughs> you're an elf on the shelf. Well, yeah, now it's one of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mandalorian and a DeLorean. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's one of those. Uh, yeah, I was trying to yeah. think of something that rhymes. A parasite like, in a... A parasite in a building site. Oh, no. Ah, no. No. It's not there. It's not there. We're just going to have to move on. So uh, could I have a little synopsis from you? Sure. Sure. Um, when the world crumbles into a science fiction hellscape, the only thing to truly fear is a roving band of renegade teenagers. Yeah. It's that. <laughs> it's that. I yeah. love them. I love the art. Yeah. They're sort of steampunk uh outlaws aren't they these renegades yeah. they're mad max it's mad max yeah yeah that, oh and then the other one i said is the government is so evil they just punched me more <laughs> okay this is very one. male gaze of a certain type this film because i mean the the, the females I mean. the females are just smacked up left right and center we see we see boobies before we hear words yeah <laughs> that's true that's true. Actually, well, let's talk about the opening scene before we get to the boobies, because this confused the fuck. This is what I'm talking about. So I have no idea what the hell's going on. Right? <laughs> and we're in a lab uh-huh. or something. And this is where I think we could have set up the whole movie. OK, mm-hmm. so they keep talking about if these parasites uh, fully evolve and release spores We all die. Yeah. But if the intro was that happening in a major metropolis, Uh that would set up the stakes of the entire movie. Yeah. But what we had (laughs) is this guy looking at leeches or whatever (laughs) under a microscope while someone's strapped to a gurney. This is what is very In the most aggressive red light. Oh, and red smoke. So I, halfway through, I was like, so hang on, who were those people at the beginning? So I rewound. And what confused me was, so the person with the Petri dish, the doctor, that uh-huh. is our lead guy, Paul. Paul, right. Paul right, Dean. Right. The guy strapped to the chair, uh, strapped to the chair, is also Paul. I thought so. Yeah. And then it's like, was some of it a dream? Right, because, yeah. Because, yeah. and then was the other guy, the government guy that yes. came up and punched him? The merchant. So, what, but he doesn't even punch him. He puts his hand on his shoulder and then Paul, like, goes, whoa, with the Petri dish. He's got a nervous yeah, disposition, yeah. obviously. And the worm goes into his stomach. And then <laughs> and then later on, he's obviously having a sort of daydream about, oh, what's going to happen to me? And for some reason, he's daydreaming that he's strapped to a chair and it bursts out of his head. But they're showing us both of those intercut. Right. So it doesn't quite make a whole lot of sense. And they never tell us that. You have to rewind. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think I wrote, so, I'm so confused, who is fighting, and why? We get nothing. But, that's your opening scene, and it makes you go, hmm, yeah. can't wait to find out what that means. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, our the first words we hear were at seven minutes. 
Uh huh. Because up until there's no words in that. Then we get credits no. and Stan Winston, yeah. by the way. Four-time Oscar-winning Stan Winston did the special effects for this. I didn't hate the special effects, if I'm being completely honest. Well, yeah. Well, what I thought was a bit weird, though, is because this is after Alien. He worked on Alien. He did Predator. He did Jurassic Park. Uh, and Fascinating. I, so it's Post-Alien? Unless he worked on Aliens. That one was, definitely won the Oscar. Then it was that. Because cause maybe it was just... Yeah, maybe he worked on Aliens then to get that. Because I just feel like you can't win an Oscar and then go and do this. It's like if Demi Moore had done Ghost and then said yes to this. Was this her first movie or was it just her first starring role? It's her first starring role. She'd done little bits here and there. Yeah. Yeah. And then we get, I mean, so we have this dream sequence. The guy rolls up to a gas station. This is where I started to get confused about the world, right? Because you still have functioning gas stations, but they only accept... (laughs) silver for yes. some reason yes and i'm like well what use does silver have in this world right you know what i mean wouldn't it be like actually i need food so if you have an apple i'll take that and you can fill up your you know what i mean yeah you got a sandwich back there i'll take that yeah sure so i can live another day or know? like a, or oxygen tanks something or water what you know, <laughs> water something silver i don't know why it's ambiguous fine but so no. but this isn't a dream though when he he stumbles across the woman being sexually assaulted in uh, an industrial kitchen. The most confusing <laughs> character in the world. Because I think I think what we we misunderstood. Because I think we actually just stumbled upon some like kink play. You know oh, it was. I mean? because, That's the thing. Because clearly, after she's rescued, she's like, "Well, why'd you why'd you make him stop?" You know what I mean? Like yeah. it was like. And then she runs off with the dudes. Well, yeah, she attacks him feirally, like an animal. Yeah. She goes, Rah! yeah. And then she goes and, like, you fucked up our, our role play. Yeah, yeah. It was still still boobies out. Oh, yeah. Oh, we, we haven't mentioned to, to listeners yet. This is set far in the future in 1992. I noticed that. And they have laser guns. Laser guns. Yeah, yeah. I bet y'all are mad, huh? We don't have laser guns yet. <laughs> and they had them in the 90s in this movie. Okay. Right, yeah. I know I'm mad. Where's my yeah. laser gun? Okay, where's my especially the the merchant who had the like the thing sticking out of his sleeve? That was cool as hell. Oh yeah, that <laughs> one. The Inspector Ga- Go Go Gadget Laser. Yeah, yeah. I, I want my Go Go Gadget Laser. I, I enjoyed that. Yeah, I kind of like. We get little peppered moments to find out what this world is like. Like when he yeah. gets taken into the the sort of diner by the old dude, and he's like. Hey, do you want coffee? I've got like 50 sachets that I found. A very confusing character too. Cause it sounded like a proposition. I'm not, I'm not, if I'm, you know what I mean? Cause he's like, what did he say? Uh, uh, his name was Buddy. The way, the way he said, you want some coffee? Made it sound like he's like, you want some D? Yeah. You cruising? You know, it's like, hey, I got hey, some coffee in my house. In a you post-apocalyptic in? world, you get what you can, you, right? You take it where you can get it. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's, 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 that's. I don't know if you knew this. Did you know that this film was originally 3D? I saw that when I was looking it up because I Googled it and it sounded like photographs. Yeah. And now I'm like, bitch, where? Yeah. So obviously there are, what I kind of like about this, a lot of 3D, quote unquote, movies of the time went overboard on the things pointing at the camera for a, an extended amount of time. Whereas this, there's, there, it happens a few times, but it's not littered with them. So the main ones yeah. are the rattlesnake jumping towards the camera. Oh, <laughs> see, I didn't even pick up that that would have been a moment. Yeah, that's one. When the parasite falls off the ceiling later on. I see that. Yeah. And when he puts his hand into the canister tube it's for a very very long time yeah so I, I did that... notice that i was like the, the shot specifically changed yes for that thing and Maybe. when someone so has was... a pole sticking out their stomach it like zooms into the pole that was a cool effect i like that when the guy got impaled and the blood comes because out. of course the 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 killer hobos come back oh yeah yeah they're, they're, they're waiting they outside a... so does he just have like a bunker that they can't get into I guess. I, I fuck knows. I and know. he calls them those wild people, I think he calls them. But also yeah. they don't they don't they definitely don't live in the wild because her hair is done. Like it uh-huh. is blown out. It is curled. Yes. It is crimped. Yes. So yes. they have electricity, yes. these people. Yeah. Somewhere. Follow them. I know, but they also said like 
like when he checks into a hotel later, she's like, we have we have power until from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. I'm like, yeah. and free water. Also, the the protagonist has like this look <laughs> yes. that he does the whole movie. And it's like the thousand mile stare when he's like just staring. Mm-hmm. Is this Paul? At the camera. Yes. Yeah. And he just like stares off into the distance or at Demi Moore and like just the, the this like this hollow. Yes. Goes through. He's giving. He's giving Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, he's giving Betty Davis eyes. <laughs> okay. <He's, laughs> somewhere between Betty Davis eyes and the hills have eyes. Okay, right. Like it's somewhere, somewhere in between. <laughs> um, but so he drives to Joshua, um, the place, not the person, and uh-huh. uh, then we meet the best character only in two scenes. The best character in the entire thing. So she introduces herself as Maggie. But in the credits, Maggie. she's listed as Miss Elizabeth Daly. So I have... You're no- kidding! <laughs> <laughs> so it's very confusing. But yeah, she is played... Yeah, they chose the take where the actress forgot her own name. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> she goes, you can call me Maggie. <laughs> it's Miss Elizabeth Daly, apparently. Um, but she's played by Vivian Blaine, who was Adelaide in the 1955 Guys and Dolls. A potion can develop a cold. Oh my god, good for her. But she's everything. Like she, and straight away she does a funny one liner like, oh, look at me, you turning up and me without a stitch of makeup. I know. <laughs> she is know, beat can, okay. for the gods. Can we talk about the makeup department in this movie? Yes. Because I feel like it was an affront. Okay. <laughs> I think they did, they did these actors so dirty. dirty especially yeah. those that are, they, 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 why? Are they turning silver? <laughs> well, one turns silver, one's... Ve- you know the girl in the back of the car? At one point, she is... I said, is, Violet, you're turning Violet! But yeah, she is She is Smurf Avatar Nebula Blue. I don't know. Natiri. What's the name of that character from Avatar? She's Avatar Way of Water. Okay, That's the she one. Is... But she's... I, I'm obsessed with Maggie slash Miss Elizabeth Daly. Um, she's amazing. And, and I'm assuming she's a madam? Because she kind of says... Like you can get extras. Oh, she they they had a thing. Yeah, right. You know, they were they were me and Mrs. Jones. Okay, we got a thing going on. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. They 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 absolutely. I mean, she was walking into his room like she owned the place. Like they Fair. cut those scenes though to keep the the PG thirteen rating or whatever sure. it was. You know what I mean? Yes. And so yeah, so he's taken a room in this brothel, I guess. Um, it had to have been. Yeah. But all the, you know, ever, but all the uh, the girls have died off, and it's just her now. The oh, what a sad. There is a film, just a, just the madam left. The loneliest little whorehouse in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but yeah, the, when he goes to the bar, that's right, and he gets a. I think he gets a can of soup for some silver. And then this is when we meet the kids, the the renegades, the steampunk. The renegades. I was so confused. It was confusing. And then I was like, and then we also find out that he has the parasite in his stomach. Of course, yes, because we've seen the stomach. Wait, so it it wasn't a dream all of a sudden. So that's where I was starting getting so, I was like, what is? Yeah, (laughs) so it's confusing. So the bit at the beginning where the doctor spills it on himself it does, the worm does go into him, but then he yeah. visualizes how it's all going to end, which is it exploding out of him. So some of it is a dream and some of it's not. It is incredibly confusing and it took yep. research. And I mean, the films shouldn't take research to find no, out what's going on. No, no. So yeah, we see it's sort of bubbling under his tummy, tummy skin. Yeah. And then we meet Patricia. <laughs> Why did he say her name I know. like that? I wrote that down. <laughs> why? Why? Who is this man? It's Patricia. It's Patricia. And at like, one what? point he goes, please, Patricia. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Who? I feel like Demi Moore was like taking the piss and she was like, yeah, call me that. Yeah. She probably, he was calling her Demi and she probably went, it's yeah. Demi. And then he said Patricia and she said, it's actually Patricia. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> she just fucking with him. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. I mean, she looked amazing. I will say. Yes. I mean, they've she dubbed this whole movie. Yeah, you could tell. Uh, they had to do all this dialogue in post. Yeah. Yeah, she looks great, and she. I mean, she is great. It's a weird character, though. I mean, very she, weird. Very. She can weird. look after herself, which I like. Yeah. 
But there's also like danger with these teens because they, they just walk in like they own the place. Even though we know the guy has a shotgun, so why is he so afraid of these kids? But could you imagine, could you imagine having to look to me more in the face <laughs> and say, uh, Little Miss Lemon Grove of 1992? <laughs> could you imagine? Yeah, yeah, because she's the Lemon Girl, right? Yeah, well, if it isn't Little Miss Lemon Grove of 1992, you know what I mean? And everyone else like, oh! Yeah, oh, no, you did. Get her! Get her, Rickus! <laughs> Burn, you go, Rick. Rickus! Yeah, <laughs> Rickus. And then he takes that lemon and takes a whole ass bite. Yeah. And I said... Where are we? What world is this? Yeah, it's the, you know, I, I don't care. Post-apocalypse, lemons are still no lemons. No one's badass enough to take a, a <laughs> straight-faced bite out of a lemon, okay? <laughs> like, rind and all. No one does that. I wish, I wish, like, he'd done it, and then we got a shot of him turning, like, off-camera going... Ugh, uh, that would have been hilarious. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's, now, it, this is very strange, because I noticed at this point... They don't really know how to end any scenes. Sort of scenes... Right. Scenes, sort of, an event happens, and then it sort of fades out. And then it, yeah. it's another scene, yeah. and then that fades yeah. out. And it feels like yeah. just a collection of vignettes. Yes. And also, the film can never quite figure out who's the villain. Because <laughs> the teens start out as the bad guys. But then you're also supposed to feel sorry for him because Rickus says, and I quote... I worked in the suburbs. That apparently was a very bad place. And he's got the mark and, to prove it. Yeah, but again, the, I don't, you know, know what the suburbs Yeah, he, are. because he says, he also says, I was an orphan and I yeah. had to work for the, the merchants. <laughs> I don't know. That's what I'm saying. We needed, instead of this fever dream of an intro scene, we needed a world establishing montage right. of some sorts. But the kids all ransack and take Paul's medical stuff. They go through all his shit and they take the cylinder yeah. that he's been guarding like a baby. And the this is when we thermos. first, the coffee thermos, that's the one. And so this is when we first see a bit of creature action because it has been very Mad Max. Yes. I was shocked because it didn't look like the creature from the beginning. <laughs> what, the, the, the leech? The tadpole? Yeah. No. Yeah, no, this is a full, this is a big ass monster. Yeah. Like, it's a, what is like the size of like your hand, I guess. It yeah. Like, At first. Yeah, and poor Zeke. Yeah, Zeke gets it. On the shoulder, but they keep saying, everyone keeps referring to it as being on his like wrist or his arm. It's really weird. Yeah, but also like they couldn't get it off him. Yeah, for so it's that. Reason. And that makes me feel like it is a leech, just burn it. But every time, but I do like that. Every time they try and like use a knife to get it off him, blood just pours from underneath. Like they're making yeah. it worse. That was fun. That was fun. And then he starts turning into the Tin Man with his makeup. <laughs> it's that. It's that for me. So yeah, he's got it on the shoulder. They can't get this parasite off him. And yeah, his face is changing. I suppose it's meant to yeah. be his blood draining. I definitely got the vibe because everyone else kind of shrivels as the creature gets bigger, <laughs> yes. you know? But I'm also like, okay, so I, my friend, I stole this thing from a doctor who's from some unknown part of the world. Uh -huh. And a monster jumped out of this thermos and bit my friend. So my first reaction is not to go back to that doctor and be like, what the fuck is this uh -huh. thing? You know what I mean? Don't worry, Zeke, you'll be fine. You sleep it off. Yeah. Zeke is not looking too good. No, and then they beat the shit out of the doctor, and then the doctor wakes up in Demi Moore's Lemon Grove house. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. Again, that's one of those fade outs. They go, oh, yeah. God, this parasite, we can't get it off. Yeah. And then yeah. we're somewhere else. Yeah. And then we meet the, the Knight Rider of the movie. Yeah, his name is Wolf. He's the merchant. Yeah, and he's the one that's got the go-go gadget uh, laser. I love him. Do you? No, but I mean, he is like one of the few characters that... Has a clear motivation, I will say. That's true. That's true. And like, and we know I need he's to find this doctor. And we know he's like a, a souped up baddie because his car uh, is a DeLorean and the doors open his, upwards. Yeah, yeah. His car so. is is cool as hell. Okay. Yeah. And he drove it out out of the suburbs into the wild. Yes. Okay. Even though you take that thing off road once and it is toast, so I don't know is the, why it was that car, but yeah. And when when Paul wakes up with Demi, Demi at half. <laughs> <laughs> when Paul wakes up with half, um, we get the we get his backstory a little bit because he's like, so I I worked for the merchants, right? Okay, Cody, hang on. This is 
Right. Let Go me. On. Right. He says, I worked for the merchants and created a new strain of parasite for them. But I destroyed yeah. them when I found out what they wanted to do with them. So, right. How did this conversation mm-hmm. go? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, hey, mm-hmm. Doc, can you make a new strain of man killing parasites for us? Sure. Da-da-da-da-da. Hey, I've made them. What are they for? What are these man killing parasites for? Oh, for killing. What? Huh? Shocked Pikachu face. He created like, them. He yeah. made. Pa- the, I mean, parasite. We made you! Isn't the definition of, of parasite an organism that takes from something else, that, you yeah. know, lives yeah. on it? So, yeah. what do you think? You make yeah. them and then ask questions? Yeah. He made them weapons. And then said, what are these weapons for? To cause harm. Mate, it didn't hold up for me because he also says he killed all of them but two. And then later on... Which also doesn't make any sense. Because later on we get this moment of a... It's like a revelation. I know how to kill them. It's sound. Sound waves. And what? Which what? never made any any sense. And I one, didn't, didn't... when did he just suddenly find out this is what it was? How did he kill the ones previously? And then at the end we find out you can just fucking blow them up. Yeah. The I think care. he's the, the the effort they go to to have to get a syringe to get to the other one to find the frequency of that one to kill it with frequency, yet they haven't yet tried cutting it, chopping yeah. it up, killing it, yeah. shooting it. They 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 jump over the trial and error and just go. It's got to be something super complicated. Yeah. When Zeke dies, though, you know you were talking about how some people, when they die, they get all, like, skeletal and stuff. I, It's full-on Michael Jackson in Thriller. You know, the sunken ah! eyes. I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh! Oh, this he's scene back. made me laugh so hard. Because then this other lady is asleep in the in the, the bed, right? Yeah. Was she next to Zeke or something? I don't know. And they, like, lift up the covers, and the slug is, like, sleeping next to her. Yes. And they're like, okay, don't move, move very slowly. And she just, like, stays there going, ah! And I was like, bitch, move! Not gonna Get out lie. Of your bed! Not gonna lie. That bit actually freaked me out. I <gasps> did it genuinely freaked me out. When they when they pull back the cover of her like sleeping bag and this fucking monster is sort of squirming next to her. He was just trying to get warm. Look at just looking for a host. It's the desert night. You know, <laughs> snuggle on up. You know what I mean? That's what my dog does. It's exactly it's just right. like my Pomeranian. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like my Pomeranian. It's huge now though. The parasite, uh-huh. it, it, it has eaten. It feasted on Zeke. It did. And now, and now it's, it's going to feast on Cindy. No, Dana. 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 Yeah, Dana. Cindy. She's she's, uh, she's for breakfast, okay? Yeah, yeah, because she gets bitten and then she turns blue. Uh, oh, uh, okay. And now, and now it's ramping up. And it's, this is where it's all about the parasite. And I like it because they get her to a bed. Yep. And yep. we see the proper sort of puppeted with the teeth. Oh, I loved it. Yeah, me too. It's it's one of the, it's totally a sandworm from Star Wars. It's exactly yep, the same design. We have a creature feature now. I love it. Um, the second, what was it? The because it's not a long movie. It was an hour and twenty minutes, something like that. Yeah. It's, so it's it's not long, but the last I would say thirty minutes is probably where we're at with like the full on creature feature. Yeah. Um, and that's when it starts moving, and like the 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 teens are no longer like evil for whatever right. reason because they're um, victims now they're yeah prey. so it's uh it's, it, the movie's kind of made itself it's clear it's now it's monster versus man you know? yeah and government but we'll get mm, there well yeah this is another thing no one it ever stays together and it's nope. su- suddenly like oh when when did they separate because now the merchant is slapping demi moore around and throwing her in her lemon patch he drop kicked her. <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah, he said, "Oh, you don't talk, Kachow! <laughs> Take this boot." And then he sits on top of her, and he's like doing like a James Bond laser to, you know what I mean? Like slowly moving. Yeah, toward, yeah, yeah. Tell me where Paul is. Where is where is Paul? And Jimmy's like, "I'm just trying to grow lemons," you know, yeah. like. And th- but the thing is, again, that fades out, and then it yeah. fades up, and. Then Rickus beats up the merchant who's no longer with Demi Moore. And I'm like, what is happening in this time? Yeah. Where's the bits in between? Because everyone is just separate. I know. I know. And for having Demi Moore in this movie, she has no agency. She has no agency whatsoever in this movie. She was just growing lemons and everything's happening around her. You I, know she what probably I mean? didn't even have an agent. Pro- <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> this didn't get her a sad card. No one's gonna, no one's gonna get that joke. This, this is non-union. Okay, this, this is, is non-union. This is non-union. Um, but to, can I can I ask you? You know, the bit where Paul then Paul finds her again. <laughs> Why did you separate in the first place? Yeah. But this is when he goes. It's sound. What has happened? That's made him no realize, like, did he fit, pop off and finish one of his experiments? Because he's like, it's sound waves. It's I frequency. Know. I have no idea. Oh, it was, I was annoyed. I have no idea. And then the worst thing that could ever happen, uh, Grizabella's putting on more makeup. <laughs> and <then laughs> Grizabella. She get, and she gets got. Oh, that's kind of good, though. It's, I mean, I, I wish she'd stuck around longer. But she's doing her makeup because she loves makeup. And obviously, she, uh-huh. she mentions how, uh-huh. like, lipstick's really rare in this world. Uh-huh. uh-huh. And she's doing her full face. And she's like, not bad, not bad. And she I is, know! like, she is dragged up. She is, yeah. She's Grizzabelle the Glamour Cat. She is ready to sing memory. Uh, but before she can make it to the stage, uh, <laughs> this was, I think this was the best kill in the movie. It is, it is. It's everything. Yeah, and then like there's like the the classic like the worm is on the the wall next to her the yeah. the plastic glass wall like looking at her and then it slides up before she can like see it yeah and then it's like dropping goop onto her hands the ceiling yeah. yeah and she does the whole look up it's classic it's classic but it doesn't end there that's what I love no and then she gets she gets sucked dry <laughs> she gets <laughs> she gets I even wrote no caps dive bomb because that slug. Uh, and which it has to be a 3D. You said it was a 3D mode. That right? is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, because we get the we are the the POV of her and it falling onto the camera <laughs> with its teeth, oh, yeah. and it falls yeah. inside her, I guess. Um, Something because she goes straight down the gullet. Yeah, and it sucks her dry. <laughs> <laughs> she yeah, and this is when I was like. Uh, I said it ended up making her look like a Tim Burton claymation doll. Oh, totally. She looked like um, Corpse Bride. When yes, it was it's done like Corpse her. Bride. Like, or I don't yeah. know, have you seen Black Sunday, uh, the Barber film? It's a very famous scene where the old lady's in bed and it's a very famous horror shot and it's got like these sunken cheeks and sunken eyes. Like there's, it's I've just, never seen that. Like it's just skin on bone and it's <gasps> so similar. It's such a similar shot. But then... It fucking bursts out of her fucking out head. Of her head. <laughs> I know, I know. She got double tapped, okay? She, yeah. <laughs> double tap. Yeah. Oh, uh, but that puppet they made of her is it's awesome. It is great. Yeah, yeah. I think this is the best effects in the movie too. Um, I think it's just this whole little section is just it's probably the best section in yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, I think thing. so. And then I think it's so. and the annoying thing is they're obviously they've teamed up now, Demi Moore and Paul, because they're like, oh, we've got to get blood off the other one so that I can find out the frequency to kill the one in my stomach. What are you talking about? This is wild. It doesn't make any sense. And exactly, I just want, even if it was, oh. How many people does it need to eat before it can make spores? But also like, wouldn't it need the other slug to like, cause spores would, I would assume it'd be like mating, right? It Uh, it couldn't just like. Or is it just, well, not just from eating. I mean, I. I don't know, that's the one thing this movie was missing, okay? (laughs) Mate, a slug sex scene. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That would have taken this movie right over the top for me. That slug bursts out of Paul's stomach and then they meet up. Like arachnophobia even had like oh, the boat. spider mate. You know what I mean? With the shadow on the wall of them just going. Yes, Ooh. yes. I'm like, that is iconic. Yes. It's iconic. The, fo- the sort of flirting on the, yeah. on the barn. And then like the- Literally, yeah, so yeah. Good. But it's like two slugs, you know, slugging. Yeah, whatever they do. Whatever they I don't do. know what slugs do. Yeah. Oh. Dirty, filthy slugs. You filthy, <laughs> you filthy, <laughs> filthy little slugs. Filthy little slugs, which I, you know, was my nickname in prison. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, but th- he gets the frequency s- from the blood. I don't, I don't know. But he makes it burst out of his stomach. And this, again, is yeah. kind of cool. It's really yeah. gross. It's really gross. I was like, I was kind of surprised. Because even though we saw it, like, burst out of a skull, like, this one was even grosser. Like, just, like, the amount of blood. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, they're going for it. Cool, cool. It's like those zip-popping videos you see on YouTube. Yep. It's, like, just it's... comes out. Yeah, yeah, it was very pussy. Then, of course, the two people that haven't fought yet, uh, we have Paul and the Merchant... And uh, the parasite is on the floor, the big one. 
Oh my god. And this And this is a recreation of the rattlesnake from the yes, beginning. That, exactly. The, I went, this is the one thing the movie has a callback to. Yeah. This is right. of course this is the one bit Using nature as a weapon by that holding makes someone any to goddamn the goddamn sense. <laughs> yeah, I saw this and I went, Oh, it's the rattlesnake. They were like, work before. <laughs> But my favorite thing about it is the rattlesnake. No, the parasite. See, <laughs> the yeah. parasnake. The parasnake. <laughs> the parasnake. That's what it should have been called. Parasnake. Parasnake. <laughs> but it gets the merchant, and he runs through a wall. <laughs> yeah. Like he runs through a wall. He runs he falls, through yeah. a wall, falls yeah, off yeah. a bridge. <laughs> Yeah. Lands on a fucking gas canister. Yeah. And then the most I say climactic and unclimactic ending ever. He goes ever. shoot it because of course to me Moore is handy with a gun. So she yeah. sort of spins it like a cowboy, shoots the canister, <laughs> it blows up. She says it's over and it literally is. Credits. But also Credits. we see like the body the sort of skeletal body burning with the parasite's mouth yeah so yeah. so we find out now oh you can kill it by just normal any yeah. like you'd kill a human i'm like that man had a laser gun yes up his and sleeve you're telling me, up his sleeve you're telling me he couldn't ka chow 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 you know what i mean yeah he ends he runs through a wall and onto a gas can uh and those it's, merchants they're built different you know what oh, I mean? hell yeah um, built different. And also, I love he. I, I think twice he complains about the heat, and I'm like, "Sir, you are in a three-piece suit. <laughs> I know that's not linen. I know that's not linen. No, it is not. That is okay. a wool blend. Yeah, you Agent Smith wannabe son of a bitch. Stop. Like, it's yeah. If listen. And also, can we talk about my? Okay, I had a couple complaints. I did enjoy the movie, but <laughs> Me I was too. my biggest complaint was the. Uh, negative 1,000% chemistry between Paul <laughs> and Demi Moore. Yeah. Like, they didn't make any... And they're hugging at the end like they survived the apocalypse. And they're like, I guess it's over. When I'm like, it is over for both of you. Listeners, yeah. just to let you know, Cody just leant to the camera and pulled his glasses off. That This is... <laughs> si- <laughs> shit I'm just like, got serious. What the hell? Hold my hoops. <laughs> yeah, and we're meant to go, oh, they they are going to live... Ha- well, one, it's still post-apocalypse. Like, you have no electricity. You can't live off lemons. No, you, you, can't, you definitely can't live off lemons. No. And also, you've not had a very close relationship. You've been quite combative. Uh, yeah, yeah. And that is one agent from the Metropolis. If they're coming back, it is not over. It is far from over. No. That government's gonna come and they're gonna they're gonna laser up your your lemon farm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna be fried l- lemons. That's not. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, I, I don't know. I I my head went. Oh, you've got something, and then I started to speak, and then it went. No, 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 no. You haven't. You haven't. Wait. I haven't finished. And it was too late. <laughs> no, let him cook. Let him cook. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Fried lemons at the whistle. St- I don't know. No. Yeah, I mean, overall, uh, 10 out of 10. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, th- I found a lot of the post-apocalyptic bits a bit lethargic. Like, I was waiting oh, for, for the, sure. the monster. And I think th- for quite, sure. the first Mad Max is actually like that because there's lots of sort of, oh, what should we do today? Kick some sand? You know, it's like, yeah. what do you for do? Sure. Uh, for sure. And I, I kind of... I like the fact that there are the different danger elements. So you've got the band of kids, the parasite, uh-huh. and the government. But yeah. they don't utilize that well enough because they don't all mix. It's like they are all right. very separate. Right. They weren't established, especially at the same time. You know yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just like one threat, and then that one kind of got solved, and then another threat, and that one got solved. And then yeah, threat, I wanted it to know? be the end. It's Demi Moore and Paul, and it's they're against all three threats but the all three threats maybe kill each other out or something you know something happens yeah yeah or like the spores thing yes we were talking about the big thing because also like if it happened 
They're in the middle of the desert, so <laughs> how detrimental could it be? You know it would mean? all blow to the city. I mean... That'd be great. Maybe, you know? Like, that would have been fun. Or, like, they could have, like, turned it on its head and been like, yeah, sure, take the slug back, merchant. Right. And then the thing spores and kills all the merchants. You well... Know what I mean? Something. A sequel was planned and agreed. No. Yes. But then Embassy Pictures, who distributed this, went under. Um, but a kind of the good thing about that was that inspired Charles Band to start up his own distribution company and production company. So then he made Created Empire. And that's when we got a load of good trash, trash to pieces. Uh, and so, you know, every cloud. But I, I'm, I would have loved <laughs> to have seen the uh, sequel because I want it to be the spores going to the of city. Of course, of course, yeah. And everyone's that's futuristic it, there, you know, it's all, it's a bit Blade Runner. Yeah, that's what I think I wanted from the movie. Yeah. Because they, all, the, all the description said post-apocalypse, and I was like, where? You know, <laughs> where? There's a gas station. Soup, where? lemons, you and know? silver. Yeah, um, it didn't make a whole but, lot of sense. I mean, it's a lot of fun. I say especially the half hour at the end is just great. Oh, yeah. And some of the character work is spectacular. <laughs> yes. Specifically by... A, What's her name? Mrs. Kasha Davis. <laughs> Mrs. 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 Kasha. Da- <laughs> Mrs. Mears. Like she's she does great in the movie. Uh, yeah, uh, but I enjoyed Mrs. it. I'm happy. I've seen Mrs. Kasha Davis. I'm There's happy. There's always I've seen time for, for a cocktail. A cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, who was your favorite character? Oh, her for sure. It's got to be her favorite death. Maggie. Hers. <laughs> it's again. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, well, she had she had the the monster slow attack scene. She had the uh, blood sucking, and she had the she got her head exploded. Like, yeah. what's better than that? You know. And it, and it's a solo That's the kind of film. I love a solo set piece where you know that you're you're talking to yourself. You've always got to have the character talking to yourself in the mirror. Yes. Or something like it, normally with the, if it's a teenage girl, they're like putting on new underwear and going. Uh-huh this looks so good on me <laughs> and then they get sliced up you know in this she's like she's lathering on the blue eyeshadow uh-huh, uh-huh. she's like still got it yes oh no yes. you know like that's the kind of if i was in a horror movie i'd want a death scene oh, like that 100 you know I mean? like where i have like my own little it's only moments. you on set yeah you know and it's like like one of my favorites is what is it from freddie versus jason mm-hmm and it's that fat guy in the cornfield and he like happens upon Jason and he's like thinks it's a joke and then he like th- like throws his beer on him and lights Jason on fire and then it's like running out of the cornfield and then gets a machete through the chest and like it's great it's genius yeah thank you i wonder if it's better in 3d i'd like to see it. i don't know <laughs> maybe there's there's additional content there's additional scenes yeah maybe um at what what have you got coming up that you can tell us about. Oh, well, I know what you're doing at the moment. We'd be probably. I don't know if you can tell people. I can't sign, oh! sign an NDA. Yeah. I signed an NDA. I can't say anything. Uh, um. Okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I hope whatever you're doing is a lot of fun. Um, are you twitching at all? Uh, I won't be until August because of this thing I'm working on. Right, but fine. I still do Twitch. Uh, pretty uh, strictly Tuesday through Thursday. Great. In the mornings. Nice. Time. And that's Cody yeah. J. Strand. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I guess it, yes, it is. Yeah? It's, yes, I it is. I think it, it is. is. Yeah. I forgot what it was for a second. Yes. <laughs> it's your name. Cody J. Strand. <laughs> it's <you>. my name. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's going to be my name. Yeah. Uh, listen, yeah. thank you so much once again. Oh, my God. Always a pleasure. Absolutely. I can't wait to do the next trash. Exactly. Perfect. Thank you, love. Mwah. Boy, to have good fun in New York. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the sun doesn't burn you too much. (laughs) (laughs) Not that. (laughs) No. Bye. Oh, my God. There we go, Rotters. Our first full movie episode of season four. Thanks for the laughs and the screams, of course, Cody. Uh, Next week... The Mates of Hell, Brad Hansen and Alex Ayling, will be swinging by to discuss our fifth Fulci film together, Murder Rock from 1984. Uh, None of us have seen this before, so I'm sure it's going to be customary chaos. To follow us on the socials, join our Patreon or visit the Brain Rot store. As always, just head to steviesbrainrot.com. Until next time, Rotters. Toodles! Toodles!